Hey guys, welcome to 3 and Out. You can check out the podcast below in the description. And here's what I need you to do. Make sure you subscribe to the Volumes YouTube channel to stay up to date to everything we're doing here on 3 and Out and the Volume. <laughs> Let's start with the Thursday game. Three things jumped out to me. One, and this is the most obvious take in the history of football. When you have the number one pick, you better keep your fingers crossed that there is an all-time great or a legit quarterback prospect in the draft. Because every year is not created equal. We saw the Jameis Marcus Mariota draft. We saw the Jared Goff Carson Wentz draft. And then we've seen Joe Burrow and Trevor Lawrence. Now listen, Trevor Lawrence, you don't need to be Bill Walsh to just watch and see his talent. The dude has immense ability. He's big. He can run. He's got a good arm. His team is terrible. But if you can't watch that Thursday night game and go, God, that guy's got a lot of talent. I would take that guy on my team. I don't know what to tell you. Joe Burrow, who is older than Trevor Lawrence, obviously, and is just more weathered. He had to transfer. Was Had just been through more adversity. Right before I press record, I saw Schefter tweet out that it's official now. Trevor Lawrence has lost more games in this regular season. He's 0-4 than he did his entire high school and college regular season career. So he's never gone through adversity. His most adversity was like losing in the college football playoffs, losing in the national championship. Joe Burrow couldn't beat out. Dwayne Haskins had to transfer. Even his first year at LSU did not go that well, but the dude just has it. Like, you, you just watch him, you go, yeah, that's it. And I was thinking about this earlier today. I, Jamar Chase didn't have a touchdown, but God, that guy's pretty good. I think quarterback, wide receiver, and quarterback tight end relationships are a little bit like the relationships we have with our significant others. Some people you just have a deeper connection with. If you've ever dated, right? If you've dated a lot of people, some people your connection with are just deeper. And obviously, for any of you that are married or engaged or in serious relationships, you're in it for a reason. Like, that's kind of your person. You kind of vibe with them. I think that's the same thing for quarterbacks and wide receivers and quarterbacks and tight ends. You've seen it historically, right? Peyton Manning, Marvin Harrison, Tom Brady, Rob Gronkowski. You see it right now with like Rodgers and Devontae. Now, obviously, all the guys I listed are Hall of Fame level players, but you just see them play together. You're like, yeah, this is meant to be. I get some of those vibes with Burrow and Jamar Chase. It's like, yeah, they belong on the same field together. They're like each other's person, you know? I watch Jamar Chase and I go, I know this guy couldn't catch anything in training camp, but holy shit, I would take this guy on my team any day of the week. The guy's a baller. And Burrow is just, he's got a little magic to his game. You know, I, I, I like my quarterback to have a super strong arm. Like, that's kind of what I'm a sucker for. And Burrow doesn't necessarily have that. But he has that playmaking. He has that it quality that I'm definitely a sucker for. He's enjoyable to watch. I mean, they're 3-1. and one. The Cincinnati Bengals are 3-1. and one. Now, do I think they're going to end the season at like 11-6 and six or 10-7? and seven? Probably not. I mean, they're probably still an 8-9 win team. But that's all because of him. And they got the number one pick in the draft when Joe Burrow was coming out. And think about this. Last year, he shatters his knee, has a terrible knee injury, gets bent over backwards. Less than a year later, he's back and balling. So it shows you tonight, he was like 25 at 32 for over 300 yards. I'm a big, big Joe Burrow fan. Then again, who's not? Uh, Urban Meyer, he looks so miserable on the sideline. He he really does. I, I saw Coward tweeting tonight, defending him. And the team's a total rebuild. And, I, you know, it's like he's taking a, he, he's subtweeting me. Because I'm someone who's talked a lot of shit about Urban Meyer. Now, listen, I have never disputed Urban Meyer as a college coach. Anyone who's listened to me, I've hammered that home over and over and over. He's one of the greatest college coaches ever. But the NFL is not college. The NFL is a tactical game. And during the game, just because, like, you get a little bored watching Jags Bengals, I looked up the... Uh, Jags coaching staff, they had a defensive coordinator I've never heard of. He's 53 years old. He's a first-time defensive coordinator. Their second most, you know, uh, veteran defensive coach is Charlie Strong, a guy who never, ever, who's 61 years old, never coached a day in the pros. Like, part of being an NFL coach, if you are going to be in urban shoes, who he's not an offensive coordinator, he's not a defensive coordinator, he's not a tactician, he's a motivator, you better hire elite tactical coaches, and that's who he hired? He's got Daryl Bevel calling his offense. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I don't think you're the pros, motivation. Like, I don't think he's going to, that's going to be a huge point of difference for him. But I'm looking at his coaching staff going, yeah, it's not that great. 
Is Urban Meyer really just going to return to the Jags after going 2-15? and 15? That's The whole situation's a little off. Uh, my thing is not that Urban can't coach and get in front of guys. It's just on Sundays, in the pros, like it just might be a little over his head. It's a tactical game. The college, when you have elite players, is a motivational game. On Sundays, it's, 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 you're playing chess. And I just look at Urban's coaching staff, and they're not playing chess. Do they have the talent? No. But are they the, a high-level coaching staff? No chance. The last thing, the thing that really stood out to me tonight is that game right there is why the NFL's king. If I put on a national broadcast on a Thursday night, uh, the Miami Marlins versus the Cincinnati Reds, no one would watch besides some Reds fans. Marlins don't have any fans. 500,000 people would watch. If I did an NBA game, the Orlando Magic against, you know, the Timberwolves, no one's watching. Yet you put the Bengals against the Jags. Probably, you know, if you had to rank, if the Cowboys are one, the Bengals and Jags are probably somewhere 30, 31, 32 in terms of brands in the league. And they've obviously been really terrible recently. I would imagine 12 to 15 million people watch that game. Like the NFL just has pitches in the bag, right, that other leagues can't bring to the table. They can draw people a game like that on paper, like, I'm not going to watch this. And then I find myself watching it going, God, I love Joe Burrow. God, I love Trevor Lawrence. I'm talking shit about Urban Meyer. God, are they going to tie this game? Are they going to win this game? You know, you just start having all these things when you're watching the game, and then you get kind of sucked in. There is, I mean, football's point of difference, the way the sport is set up, it's only once a week. And even the Thursday night game, you can throw out the crappiest of matchups and we still watch. It, it, it really is, like, I understand why they're so arrogant. They have a point of difference that the other leagues have absolutely zero chance to, uh, to obviously model their sport after they can't. The sports are different. But to, uh, to duplicate. I mean, they are so far ahead, and it feels like games like that that couldn't be any crappier on paper, then once you watch them, they're not that terrible. The sport only separates. So, I, you know, it's pretty clear on nights like tonight why the NFL got $100 billion worth of te- television deal uh, for the next decade. Thanks for watching 3 and Out. You can check out the podcast below in the description. And make sure you subscribe right now to the Volumes YouTube channel.